Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity, upper left hand corner. We have Whip starting as the pink Terran, upper right hand corner. We have Tim starting as the mustard yellow Protoss. This is on Allegro, so the map reveals. I have to <laughs> reveal the map sometimes when I don't check ahead of time <laughs> to make sure I know which map it is. So, potential cheese situation. I think that might favor Whip more than it favors Tim. Knowing Whip's playstyle and knowing that Whip tends to be a creative guy, although it's not that's not to say we haven't seen Tim get creative here and there. But between the two, I do believe that Whip is rated slightly higher. We have seen Tim play at an incredible level this entire tournament, though. And only to get knocked out by Jayun. And honestly, I'm wondering if he went into I'm wondering if he if he continues in the bracket and refaces Jayun, if he'll have an opportunity to knock him out, knowing that Jayun likes to favor the uh, more of the uh, what am I looking for? Dark Templar opener, and then it's a bad idea to to proc to two gate him. But honestly, just going for that straight order, that build order, where you're just going to counter that uh, the DTS, I think can put you in a really strong situation versus Jayun in PvP. And I feel bad advertising that out to the world, <clears throat> but uh, it's one of those things in tournament preparations, you know, it'll become the thing. Anyway, Barracks dropping for Whip. I'm wondering if Tim was aware of that or not, was just trying to play heads up, or if it's something he might have figured out as the tournament goes. You know, actually, what, this reminds me of a story, actually. I remember at the World Cyber Games, I can't remember if it was 2007 or 2008, but G5 was going up against Nuni. Nuni was the number one Protoss in the country at the time. G5 was number two Protoss in the country at the time. Actually, I think he ended up number three at the end of that tournament. But it was funny because he went up to uh, another competitor and he was like, hey, if you do this build right here, if this, if you just do this build right here with a Dark Templar opener, you'll beat Nuni. This is all you have to do. And the guy ignored him and went with some other build and ended up losing to Nuni overall. And then G5 went and just executed that build. And basically he was like, he builds, he goes... One gate obs, and then sends the obs straight down to the middle of the map every single time. So just... Whoa. SCV getting a pylon built in front of its face. Aggressive pylon placement there. Which suggests we are potentially going to set up for a faster expansion. Probably one gate to expand. But first scout there for whip, by the way. He is going to go ahead and plop down factory and not bother building an initial marine. Seeing no zealots out on the field. And it looks like Tim, unfortunately, is going to get last scout, which is a challenge versus Whip. But anyway, so G5 then, yeah, did it. He took, he built the DT, walked right around the observer pathing, and ended up taking a game. He didn't end up winning the series overall, but I think the previous series set was like a best of one even. But uh, it was fun watching those competitors there. I think Artosis was there, but got knocked out in earlier rounds. Three, is this just two SCV on gas? I think this might be just two SCV on gas for hybrid, but this leads me to believe we still might end up seeing two factories right off the bat from Whip. Whip does has, have that initial Marine, second Marine making its way down. Now two Marines are sufficient to kill a probe with some decent micro. In the meantime, that SCV having stolen some minerals is gonna wander out, but being chased off, I think he still knows with that pylon placement, that Dragoon towards the front, that it is only a single gateway into expand style build. Whip building a bunker at the natural expansion. It looks like he is just going to go for that initial vulture, and I'm curious why he decided to leave more SCV on gas as a follow-up with this. So I'm wondering if he's got something creative as far as... And it looks like that vulture going to be able to sweep the corner, only going to take a shot. Now it's faster than that Dragoon. So that Dragoon's going to have to scurry back. May, might want to even beeline. Yeah, beeline back to home base. The SCV snuck back in and has confirmed that it's still just one gate. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if Tim was thinking about just trying to sneak a quick three, uh, quick three nexus based on what he was seeing out there. Whip going to go ahead and drop his expansion behind this upgrading mines, the vulture hanging out in the middle of the map currently. Neither player opting to utilize the shorter rust distance here and play a more aggressive style. As a result, Dragoon chasing that SCV back out, but it's getting the nexus timing. I think it confirmed the robotics facility as well, potentially while it was up there, but it looks like it, yeah, it's going to be a two-gate robo follow-up. Tim in a pretty good position to go ahead and grab a third if he wants, but he does want that observer out in the field to deal with that vulture, and he still needs sufficient amounts of dragoons, although he's already got one dragoon hanging out at the three o'clock with a probe. He does need sufficient amount of dragoons to defend even against that single vulture. No mines being planted out yet because that research isn't quite finished, but it looks like Whip wants to go ahead and get those mines down 
right on the front and maybe transition to a macro game. But between the two, I think Tim in a pretty good position to take the overall macro lead. Dragoon chasing down that Vulture. Vulture engaging a little bit. Is he going to... Nope. Okay, he's going to back off. There's some mines in between here. Another Vulture sneaking in the gap. So pretty good vision coverage there for Whip. As you can see, he's got really good... Well, had good vision until that uh, Dragoon take a hit. Thank you for the raid, by the way, Petri. <clears throat> so Whip has the natural expansion up. Looks like, looks like he's just going to go up to a single factory, and he's got that armor cycling plus one weapons. Now, it's possible he's going to wait a minute and drop a couple additional factories. He's got that academy building as well. And drop a couple additional factories. But I have a feeling he's just going to try to go for some of these vulture mine contains and maybe try to play towards three and go for that level two weapons, level one armor, higher count. And let's see if he changes his mind upon seeing this. He is in a situation where he can be flexible with it still. So wandering up, seeing that Dragoon blockading, seeing that there's a, the pylon blockade, it looks like just now Tim going to go ahead and drop that three o'clock location is clearing mines to his front, and I like that he's being diligent about that. But right now, because Whip has played, really hasn't played a flood of vultures, and honestly, this isn't really a map where you can pull that off anyway, because the chokes just aren't that exposed or wide open. I'm not sure that there's enough territory to really make that as much of a threat as it would be on the other maps. But right now, Whip actually sneaking out, gonna try to chase these dragoons down as they're a little bit overexposed. But Whip does need to draw back, because if he's not too careful, they're, with some follow-up Dragoons, might have ended up losing a tank. But right now, the Observer able to float in is going to confirm that it is only two factories running right now, and Siege Check is just researching. Plus one weapons, halfway finish. It is possible we're going to see a drop, but I think that Starport's just to make its way to level two weapons. And never mind, Whip not even going to bother floating a Command Center out there. He's just going to build it on the flat ground, realizing correctly realizing that the the third base is in place. However, Tim does have a good amount of Dragoons to move out, and Whip is playing rather light, and he doesn't even have Siege Tech finished yet. It's going to be a minute before Siege Tech is complete, so these Dragoons might be able to get something accomplished, specifically picking off some Siege Tanks, maybe even halting that factory, as mines are not in the way. Whip playing a little bit greedy here. The Observer going to lead, clear the mines. That's only two Siege Tanks if they do get Siege Tech, so Siege Tech finishes... Command center is not in construction, and you can see there's only, yeah, three siege tanks total for whip off those two factories, so gonna have to cancel that command center. <clears throat> so trying to play it greedy is gonna end up losing a slew of minerals, and now Tim takes a commanding lead, because his third base is up, forced that cancellation, there were no factories in between, that's gonna force an immediate transition into four factory from whip. Yeah, now he's got a lot of ground to cover. Science facility being built, plus one weapons just now finishing, but even with that plus one weapons hitting, he doesn't really ha he's backed up into his base. He does not have sufficient troops to really push against this. Second army going up, so he's going to have to wait for plus two weapons, plus one armor, and just hope that Tim fumbles a little bit on his macro. But right now, Tim tacking on additional gateways. He's up 20 supplies, Citadel of Dune in place, and he's going to have a nice, tra nice easy transition, honestly, with, uh, and it looks like somehow some vultures were able to sneak through. Maybe that was from earlier. But the Dragoons are well in place to go ahead and engage any additional vultures that were going to sneak out on the map. Speed now upgrading. And again, I don't feel like, even if this was just going to be a vulture flood, which I do not it believe it's going to be here from Whip, even if he's going for a vulture flood and was going to try to send them out in the map there, first of all, Tim's right on the border there to cause some disruption. But secondarily, the natural expansion with the pylon wall and the pylon wall here, there's just not a lot of territory to really punch through unless he was going to go for a drop, which it looks like he's not going to. So Whip's still going to try to go ahead and grab that third, but that third's going to come at great delay and he's going to have to evict all of these dragoons out of the third and have sufficient troops Kind of being on a back foot, trying to sneak that command center early to do so. So Tim, going to go, I think recognizing this, going to grab his fourth. Now this is somewhat exposed to vultures, but those vultures need to stay at home base to go ahead and get that extra clip to go ahead and grab that additional base. So now a sixth gateway going down. Stargate is up. We're probably going to see that Arbiter Tribunal in not too long. Tim is in a great position here, although he has fumbled a little bit on the macro and lost a couple Dragoons out on the front, but he's ahead in the worker lead. He's going to take that fourth way ahead of Whip grabbing his third. Is still up 20 supply, and let's see if he challenges this overall. He does have Zealot leg speed, although not a lot of Zealots to group up. 
And it looks like actually, unfortunately, in grabbing that expansion, expending the resources there, that is basically allowing Whip to go ahead and grab this third. That still means Tim is ahead economically, however. But regardless, this does give a little bit more life to Whip. So yeah, he's behind on workers, but he's going to go ahead and make that cycle to level two weapons, going to hit that level two weapons, level one armor. Now moving up to five factories to go ahead and fill out the troops to make that happen. Dropping Compsat as well. The Stargate is there. I don't see an Arbiter alongside. The Dragoons looking for position to engage. It looks like they are going to dive into this. The Zealots able to get close to those siege tanks in the bunching. And it looks like Tim just has an overwhelming attack force on the front. And he's going to be able to clear out a lot of these units. He does need to back off because, yes, he's wiped out a lot of whips units but he need if he to really capitalize on this if he can draw some units back and attack the scv oh he just doesn't have enough left in the follow-up so whip defends and let's see if he can go ahead and get some more siege tanks out there already building another command center so he's thinking about the long game so building a command center on the low ground so probably he's just going to skip the level two weapons level one armor timing Zealot going ahead and clearing that minefield. More Zealots along the way. Some Vultures have managed to sneak across. They've managed to find that fourth base and going to be able to get some probes there. That's going to draw these Zealots back. So Whip going to buy himself some time. Once again, Engineering Bay out on the front just to create a degree of blockade. But Whip all of a sudden <clears throat> still way down on supply, but has managed to at least buy himself some time to get those upgrades and maybe climb a little bit here. Plus one armor now online. Plus two weapons. Well, I assume it's not that far behind. Did he just miss that upgrade? No, there's plus two weapons engaging now. Again, with that last attack from Tim, he doesn't have like a glut of forces he can just pour out here. So he's just going to have to wait and macro up. But oftentimes, Terran can get back into matches that way. Initial Arbiter's taking the field. Tim himself with plus one weapons. This is where his, arm his army's a little bit softer against the mech. And I think Whip going to go ahead yeah, and float that out. Has some vultures and some mines in the way and staging to the south. So he's setting up for a longer game. Tim still with a good 30 supply lead. So in a good situation still, but does probably want to think about grabbing an additional base. Maybe even think about, yeah, getting that stasis, getting those arbiters out. Maybe even tacking on an additional Stargate to engage into this. Whip able to transfer some SCVs immediately into that fourth base is going to sit back and macro up right now he's at a huge supply deficit he's just going to try to rely on terrain and bad engagements from tim to try to sneak back into this but if tim stays back and just macros up and gets those arbiters out in the field lands some good stasis he could very quickly take this fourth out or just storm in with what he's got the zealots moving in they're getting mostly cleared by the vultures now the arbiter joining does it have a stasis doesn't look like it has a st enough energy for a stasis so tim Unfortunately, with that 1-2 combo attack, is going to end up losing the entirety of his army. And now with that, yeah, playing into Tim uh, into Whip's hands. So resetting the unit count. With the uh, Yeah, Whip has the superior upgrades, had the positioning. The Zealots had leg speed, but no stasis support. And as a result, with a bad engagement, Whip taking the supply lead and turning it right back around. You can injure Terran, but Terran, oftentimes, if they shell up, they can find ways back into the match, particularly if their opponents make big critical mistakes like that. Tim, realizing the siege tank count slow, is going to continue to try to push that. The Vultures sweeping into that fourth in the meantime. There's the big stasis, so this engagement might have a lot more success. So the siege tank's going to get wiped out. A Goliath trying to engage that Arbiter. Some Vulture is going to go ahead and sweep in, drop some mines. But Tim does need to disengage. Maybe if he can sneak those Dragoons up to that 9 o'clock, peel some SCVs, engage the Vultures there, might have more success. He's still trying to fight over that siege tank line. But the Vultures and reinforcements are going to clear that out. So Whip still maintaining that supply lead. The probes having been disrupted, not continuing their mining at the 4 o'clock location. So Whip getting some good economic aggression done there as well. Looks like Tim is setting up to go ahead and start grabbing bases in the bottom right. But he needs to be somewhat careful. Because as Whip comes out of stasis and as that supply count grows, he can turn around, just drop everything, and go for either a punch at one of these bases or maybe even go for a natural expansion seal. It looks like right now Whip's plan is to just go ahead and dive into this fourth. Try to keep it clear. Doesn't even need to there. It looks like actually that woke Tim up, so did him a favor. Tim once again staging... With two Arbiters, Defense Matrix on the front, and Tim 
losing a few free units right there has regained the supply lead, but not a sufficient supply lead at this stage of the game. Level 2 weapons is online for him. One critical bonus for Tim is he does have the two Arbiters out and double Stargate and more joining. If he can keep the Arbiters flowing and get some solid stasis across any additional engagements, he'll be in good position. He is grabbing that base bottom right. But Whip has got lifeblood. He's back in the match. The one thing I do want to note is he's sitting at 80, uh, maybe just because he was oversupplied and is anticipating some recalls, is sitting at 81 SCVs. So he's overproduced SCVs, which means his army is not quite as large as you would expect. So he is sitting in more the standard PVT army range because of that difference in the worker count. Vultures once again diving in. They just are, have been consistently obliterating this probe line under cannon fire do not care, leaving just a single probe left. Part of that might just be on Tim's side, where he hasn't been able to keep the probes alive because they've just been getting annihilated. More probes transferring in that direction. So Whip, mining happily off three bases, his main mined out, dropping a flurry of compsats, I think just to try to keep tabs on the army and where it's at. More probes are going to transfer, it looks like, to the bottom right. There is a pylon wall there as well. So Tim can, excuse me, easily take the main on the upper right. So if Tim can actually hold on, he needs more gateways behind this. And so the double star gate's whirling, but he needs to get up to a nine, maybe even 10 gateway count, or he needs to get some refugee gateways down here in the bottom right-hand corner to keep up with Whip's economy. Right now, Tim at the 200 supply mark, but Whip is not that far behind. And these are now level three weapon siege tanks. And my guess is his level two armor is not that far. Yeah, it's about halfway finished. I guess there was a sizable delay on the level 2 armor, but that level 3 weapons, it hits hard. And especially if the mines aren't diligently cleared, you can end up losing armies quite rapidly. The vultures sweeping through, running in between two armies. It looks like they're going to go get, get sandwiched, able to drop a handful of mines. They want to make their way to the fourth once again. The dragoons, this time, yeah, sweeping forward, doing a pretty good job of clearing that. And it looks like Tim trying to find a weak spot in the defenses. This is going to draw a lot of the troops back to the north. And also delay Whip from taking additional territory. Whip's been supply cap for quite some time. So I'm kind of curious. Okay, there the supply kicking back and immediately filling out. So he, he's not that far away. And a recall now at the 9 o'clock location. I missed it. Wow. And so did Whip, it looks like. Trying to draw the troops back. So Tim baiting the troops to the north so he can go ahead and get a recall in the back line. Nice play there. This actually might do Whip some favors as it's clearing out a lot of his SCVs. Which were... Hogging a lot of his supply. So going to be able to clean it up. Loses a lot of the saturation here. Should be able to transfer. Uh, Tim, not missing a beat, is now going to engage to the north. While Whip is distracted, getting a good stasis of the two siege tanks, leaving the four siege tanks to the rear exposed. And now he's going to be able to hit Whip's two mining bases. So attack that mineral only potentially. If Zealots can go ahead and mix it up and get in the line there. And now that 9 o'clock has mostly been shut down as well. Although a lot of SCVs transferring to that location. So... Tim doing some work. Supplies, again, resetting. Looks like Tim now able to clean that up. Splash damage, not killing a lot of SCVs there. Whips, or sorry, Tim saturating that bottom right-hand base. The Arbiters need to pull out to preserve. It's actually critical that Tim keeps these Arbiters alive. They're going to go ahead and back off. And with the reset, however, Whip has re much more rapidly. And I think that is because of... Yeah, just, okay, finally Tim adding some gateways. Just needs more gateways down to be able to reset resupply rapidly because as we see with the factory count that whip is rolling he is simply out macroing here in the late game is able to refill that supply much more rapidly he's going for a kill maneuver maneuver moving in towards the natural expansion is trapped a bit of tim's army from both sides some probes were transferring out except no they're not they're going to die and so it is just arbiters on the front one arbiter down big stasis to the south and to the north more troops filling in, but right now Whip has a huge lead in supply. Tim has a small window where all of those units are stasis to rally some reinforcements to save his natural expansion. Another big stasis on the front. The stasis for Tim have been pretty solid. More zealots marching forward, but this might have been it. Maybe Tim can, looks like he's instantly trying to rebuild bottom right-hand corner. Needs to do that in a hurry does have the resources to do so so this is going to turn potentially into a refugee style but whip right now going to be able to decimate everything at the main problem for whip is he's down to two bases he's just got that nine o'clock location and that mineral only he needs to start grabbing some territory himself 
if things reset and Tim's able to rebuild to the bottom right, he's still got, well, he's got a little bit of that three clock running, but he's got three bases otherwise if he can just get his uh, probes. If he can wake up his probes and get them mining. So if he can go ahead and plop down some additional gateways, get some arbiters back up, get his tech reestablished, he might be able to sneak back in this game, but he's got to race Whip to do so. And right now, Whip, with a huge supply lead, is starting to swing around to additional locations. A lot of energy left on this arbiter to potentially slow this down. It looks like Whip, realizing the situation, is just going to dive towards the mineral only here, leaving some troops behind to go ahead and mine and deal with reinforcements coming out of the main. He's going to be able to clear out that 3 o'clock. Isn't even bothering Sijing here. He is going to go ahead and grab the 8 o'clock location. Some zealots checking bottom left to make sure that Whip isn't able to grab that to maintain a starvation situation. And it looks like there was another recall at the 9 o'clock in the meantime that forced it to lift off. Sorry, I didn't catch that on screen. Watching everywhere else. So the mineral only is gone. Whip having to lift off momentarily, but it looks like that's not going to last for very long. Is going to be pushed out. The Zealots made their way to the natural expansion, so they were able to clear that out. But Whip, with 190 supply, is diving in to what is left of the mining bases, and it looks like Whip has reestablished the 12 o'clock location to go ahead and get more bases running for him. So Tim, with a momentary, uh, a momentary economic lead, but Whip, with what he's got on the ground, just shoving through and clearing out everything that Tim was mining with, so that... Three o'clock base will shortly be gone. The mineral only will shortly be gone. There are some gateways up here and a lot of zealots to potentially defend, but I don't know if it's enough to deal with these siege tanks as they barrel forward, particularly without Arbiter support. And a clutch defense matrix on the front so that Vulture can bully in. There's also a single uh, pylon powering absolutely everything. Tim looking for a counterattack to maybe get something accomplished. Maybe force these troops back, but honestly, I don't think Whip's going to take the bait. If it turned into a base raid situation, Tim just doesn't have the troops. I think he realizes it now is going to give a GG well played. And Tim with a great tournament run, but Whip will advance in a fun closer. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.